He's so revered. He's worshipped in Argentina. He, he constantly had a huge entourage around him. Um, and I went to, a, to see a game, and I'll never forget it, see Boca Juniors play. And it was, he had his own little box there, and I went with his family. And he's standing there, so, and the, the atmosphere was unbelievable at this game. And his family, his, one of his daughters was literally holding him, and he's he screaming over the balcony, holding him so he wouldn't actually fall off. I mean, he had such an incredible passion for the game. OK, take one, Maradona. What's that all about? <laughs> What's that all about? It was a video cassette I saw about him. Maradona. It was a training session, in fact. Well, everything he did during the game, everyone saw. Everyone knows what he's capable of. But during training, he makes moves that are even more incredible. He's the only one who can do them. I remember one in particular. He'd be practically in the six-yard box. Almost on the goal line. And in fact, he tries to put the ball onto the crossbar so that it'll come back to him. Well, you're already lucky if you can do it once. But he'd do it four or five times. So that's what I remember. It's just to say that he had this incredible precision. I was going to say it in Italian. Incredible precision. And all the players, there's people like Platini on the pitch, lots of great, great players from around the world, and everyone was totally in awe of him. First thing he did was in the dressing room, he sat there, just a pair of shorts, and you know, like you roll your socks up. He just stood them and he juggled them on his left foot, just like that, for about five minutes, and everyone was going, whoa. And then we went out on the pitch, and um, I think, I don't think I'm tuned in, I think I can stand up um, and show you this. He did something that was incredible, one of the most unbelievable things I've ever seen on a football pitch. It might not sound that amazing to, to you at home, but you, you, I think you'll appreciate this. He juggled the ball all the way out to the centre circle, and then he got to the centre circle, still juggling it, and then he went, bang, and he whacked it as hard as he possibly could, and he waited. And it came down, and he went bang, and he did it again. And he did it 13 times, and the most he ever did was walk three paces to it. And all of us were sitting there going, huh. oh my God, that's... <laughs> like I was then. That, that's, it, that's impossible. It is. And I, I remember going to train the next, next day in Barcelona and stuff, and, and we all tried it, and the best anyone did was three, and they were running for the third one. <laughs> and I've just never seen anyone have just such a beautiful affection with the football. It was a banner in Argentina, I think, one year ago I read it, that uh, it said, no matter what you have done with your life, Diego, it matters what you have done for our lives. Maradona and Diego. Maradona, the world knows. The world never forget. Diego Maradona was, the, um, was my idol growing up. He was a, a person that... Um, well, I was always in a, born into a football family, but he was the player on the world stage that, that made me fall in love with the game. I've seen over the last couple of days guys on the show talking about their own connection and their own stories and things that they have heard about Maradona or things that they have experienced with Maradona. In my case, it's, it's not a story that I heard. It's not something that, that somebody told me. It's not something that has been passed down. It's something that I lived through with Maradona as a coach of Argentina. Every time they're passing the ball around, for whatever reason, Verón wasn't a very popular mm. player at the time, and he, controversially, picked Verón to be on his team. Mm. They're passing the ball around, okay, pass, 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 gets to Verón, the whole stadium, 70,000 people, or however many people were there, booing Verón. So pass, 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 boo, pass, 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 <laughs> boo. Maradona realizes what happened, or what's going on, so he then walks out onto the technical area, and the next time that Verón touches the ball, well, he starts clapping for Verón and then kind of giving a one of these to the stadium to clap for Verón. And wouldn't you know it, that the next time that Juan Sebastián Verón touched the ball, that stadium, the whole energy changed. All of a sudden, they're clapping for Verón. They're cheering for Verón. The whole stadium now said, okay, if Diego was telling us to clap for that guy, we're gonna clap for that guy. And I saw that first and I thought to myself, man, the magnetic pull, the obsession, the religious experience that it is between the Argentinian people and Diego Maradona, it cannot be explained. But the other goal he scored in that game, I mean, you've got to realise as well, the pitch at the Azteca was awful. Mm. It, was, it had been kind of relayed just before, and you know like you relay your garden with small pieces of turf? It was exactly like that, and every time you put your foot on one piece of turf, it just, it, it kind of just disappeared under your foot. 
And to do what he did, that little pivot and turn on the halfway line and then go past the players like they weren't there, uh, was, was just a, a most remarkable thing. It's the closest in my life that I've ever felt like I ought to applaud someone else scoring a goal. Obviously, I didn't because <laughs> you get destroyed back home, but he was, he was head and shoulders the best player of my generation. What were the tactics in that game, Gary? Was he, was he, were you man-to-man -man marking him? Or? No, because we'd never really played man-to-man -man marking. So what, what we actually did, and we, we talked, it was basically, as soon as he gets the ball, whoever's closest, you, you get to him. Um, the trouble with man-to-man -man marking, because he was so clever, once he beats one, then what happens? Yeah. And I th so it was, it was a difficult one, but uh, whatever we tried, it didn't work. It didn't mm -hmm. work. Uh, but just his ability to play and, and also, and what he was able to do in that era, don't forget the laws of the game in that era were completely different. Defenders tried to kick lumps out of him and did, right? Pitches were terrible. I mean, absolutely terrible most of the time. Players wouldn't even train on them today, and yet he was able to manipulate the ball a bit like Messi does now, but without the protection of the laws, without the, 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 the beautiful pitches they have now, and he was still able to produce some of the most magical moments that, that we'll always remember. I, I made sure that my, my son knows a lot about him, even being born after Diego Maradona as a player. And I know that my son will make sure that one day when he's a, a father, he will, he will not let his kids uh, forget who he is. I had told already, I had met him once, which is for um, a player, it was not a player anymore, but for a player of my level, which I was, was like meeting the Pope, to be honest. Um, and that um, was really, really special. So I, I, football will miss him, I will miss him. And you can see with all the reactions all over um, the world, if we would have shown our love for him during, without having to have a selfie, um, just if we would have shown him the respect he deserves, while he was still alive, I think, um, yeah, we could have helped him. In my big defeats, he would always call me. In my victories, never, never. But uh, I will miss Diego and I still, of course, I'm very sad, but I, I have a smile because with him, every minute I spent with him was to laugh. Well, I was a little boy with my dad. Sometimes came to Barcelona to see Maradona playing football. It was incredible. Unfortunately, had an blow, blow, a great, great injury, big injury. And uh, his period was short. Uh, when I arrived to the academy, he lives to, to Napoli. I could not, no short time, but being there in the academy of Barcelona, being close more for the Barcelona games. Um, but his impact uh, in the world football and his career and the, the love and the joy and I was not in the locker room with him but all the people who was with him in the locker rooms express how his generosity, his uh, thinking for all of them, defend the position for the to make a better, better world football and on the pitch was something unique for one or two generations who was a player like I said, wow, what a player is playing right now. So. Uh, it's a sad news. Uh, we knew that it was not perfect, and uh, yeah, a big hug for all his family. Well, absolutely, Diego Armando Maradona was one of the best ever, and this is a very, very sad day, a very sad moment for world football. Uh, he was a genius. He was a genius on the field. Uh, obviously, he had many problems off the field afterwards, uh, and even during his career. But, but he was for me. I mean, I admired him. Uh, so often he was for me an artist. He was somebody that did things that nobody else could do. And uh, the way he led then obviously his Argentina to a, a World Cup triumph, but um, many, many moments that he lived through in, in uh, Napoli um, made him unforgettable for everyone. He was one of the greatest ever. He was just, uh, just full of creativity. He was just inventful. He was just, you never knew what he was doing the next moment. And he got so much stick. He was continuously fouled, uh, hammered by defenders, by, by midfielders. So everybody was chasing him. 
and he always found solutions. Uh, Maradona was a, a genius in finding solutions on the field. The goals that he scored were so creative. Were just uh, it's just uh, um, unique. He's just he was just unique. Esta tarde no hemos escuchado eso. Es una triste noticia, pero no solo para el mundo del fútbol, para para el mundo entero, creo. Y y, y bueno, yo me acuerdo de, 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 de Maradona, sobre todo en el 80 y 86. Tenía yo 14 años, eh, pero al final. Uh, al final he tenido la suerte de decir que decirle a él que el 86 eh, porque todo el mundo todos los niños quieren decir las cosas y yo he tenido la, la, la oportunidad de decirle que ha sido la, la hostia como jugador y, y eso yo me acuerdo de, de eso eh, y ya está luego por eh, es una, te digo, una triste noticia y, y nos saludamos a, es un, a, su, a su familia y, a, y, y bueno, eh, que descanse en, en paz. I remember vividly moments of World Cups in early age, in my early years. I wasn't even that put out by the hand of God. I was as an England fan, but his individual brilliance overcame that as I grew up. Um, was fortunate enough to meet him very briefly. He's a footballing god, and it's very sad that he's that he's not with us. I think expressed perfectly what this guy gave us: uh, the man of joy and the pleasure, and uh, and uh, his commitment for his uh, the world football. He made the world football better. His performance in uh, you know what had done in Napoli, a team for the south, and uh, especially with the national team in Argentina, Mexico, '86 was something unbelievable and uh, yeah, rest in peace and uh, in behalf of Manchester City, of course, a big hug for all his family. Mm -hmm.